Back for the back nine at Fieldstone. Starting off with a 173 yard par three, pin in the back. See if we can hit a seven up there. What's up everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. And today we return to the Fieldstone Golf Club out in Auburn Hills, Michigan for the back nine. If you remember on the front, I shot a pretty solid 41 plus five. Uh, hopefully we can put together another good nine holes here and hopefully break 80 today. Uh, gonna need a 38, pretty tall order, but I think we can do it. Also, you didn't notice, they give you the sand divot mix on the cart. Don't have rakes on it like Eagle Glen, that would be nice, but still, Real nice place, guys. This, we take things seriously around here, I'll tell you that. Just showing you the um, div mix in the carts here. Yeah, this course does not mess around. Let me tell you, it was really a privilege to work here this past uh, summer. Great golf course. Uh, definitely recommend it to anyone in the area. The greens are absolutely amazing and the, the layout is just really cool looking uh the one thing i will say about it is, is it's a little bit noisy on a few holes get a little bit close to the road so or like big roads like we're talking like i-75 so just be aware of that um honestly On, on a weekend, it probably wouldn't be that bad, so... I don't know, that's just a very nitpicky critique here. But, you know, golf is that way. Golf is very nitpicky. It does not tolerate any small errors. Which is exactly what happens here. A lip out. Probably uh, my first putt from that range that I haven't done well with today so we drop a shot here we're at plus six now heading into hole 11 and I really wanted to go par par on these two holes 10 and 11 before hole 12 because if you've ever played fieldstone before you'll know that hole 12 is an absolute beast um nobody gets out of it alive and oh okay I that's not true. I just never have. So we really need to um, do well on these two holes beforehand. And that drive's certainly going to help right there. So we got only about 75 yards in. After a really nice drive. On board. Real easy to bail out right. Because there's OB to the left over there. But I was able to... Um, Split the difference, get on to the right side of the fairway, and then hit a, I don't know, it was a pretty average shot up to the green. But um, green and regulation doesn't hurt. Never. It never hurts. So, got about 30 feet up the hill here. Not really expecting to make this. My lag putting's been pretty good today, and this is another pretty good one. Get this one to about a foot away and a tap in par. So, heading into hole, hole 12 is my nemesis hole, and uh, we're at plus six with six holes to go. Looking like it's going to be tight. Got to get through 12, Here it though. is, folks. The nemesis hole. Made a nine on this hole in the county tournament. Wind is not helping. 5.33, par 5. And now I'll show you on the GPS. Nice little cart here, isn't it? Uh, show you on this GPS. In order to clear, forced carry a 196 to the left side of the fairway, but look what it is to the right. 308. So basically, if you squirt it right, you toast. So just getting you guys a look at the whole map there. Very 
I mean, it's a well-designed hole. It's very challenging, and um, but at the same time, it just you're puckering up so hard when you are on that tee box because you cannot score it at left, you cannot score it right, and you have to hit it at least 190 yards. So let's see what we can do. Most important shot of the day up till this point. It starts off on a really good line, but it's fading to the right just a little bit. It's going to be near those reeds over there, and from the tee, I really couldn't tell. Probably dead again. Frick. Yeah, that was... Uh, it started off on a good line, and it just curved. The wind took it out. All right. Well, hopefully we still made it across. I feel like I made it across, but I feel like it just bounced along the hazard and then just kind of went into the hazard. We'll see. And when I get up there, it is bad news. Big mistake. Just costly. This hole's evil. This hole's evil and it tricks you. But it is a par five. So I'm thinking, you know what? I've got 330 yards to go. The second shot's really easy on this hole. So I just take a five wood, which is usually my best club out of the rough. And I hit a really good one here, as you guys are going to see. Yeah, smoked it right down the left side. Going to be in the left side of the fairway. And uh, we're going to have about 115 in for our fourth. Guaranteed, I missed by like two yards. I remember I went over those little sticks hanging up there. So there's no way. It's like fully in the, the weeds, but it's like inside the hazard and I plugged. Either it plugged or it bounced along the side. It's tough, it's tough. And over there, that's out of bounds over there. In the, on that other side. So, so you can't bail out left. Like if I duck hook it left, I'm out of bounds and I gotta re-tee. So you just have to be perfect with that tee shot. There's more room on the left than it looks like, but nobody wants to aim over there. It's tough. It's a very mental hole. So, all right. Pins in a favorable spot, 115 to the front. So this third shot, or excuse me, fourth shot is really tough here. Just because the green is so small. And I hit a decent enough gap oh, wedge. Spun off. But it spun off there's the front. There's a pitch front. mark, and there's where it ended up. Kind of a big slope here, but just I, I don't think it would have been enough there if there wasn't any spin on this, in the ball. Uh, small green front pin. Maybe getting a little greedy. Maybe I should have taken a extra club, just got on the center of the green, got a two putt and wrapped this hole up. But from this position, it looks like it's one more important shot, David. Steps. You can't miss hit this one. Yeah. Oh, he's driven that one in low. But that one will not spin. When oh, easy, easy, easy. Hang on, hang on. You gotta be kidding. Oh, this is incredible. incredible. You are kidding. My goodness, this game. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And it just so happened to be in the perfect spot to roll all the way down that little strip there. And so now we're twice as far away hitting our sixth shot. Oh my gosh. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me before. I mean, oh man. If you guys don't know what that... Uh, PGA Tour golf commentator was from that was from the Farmers Insurance Open in 2012 when Kyle Stanley famously made a triple bogey on the last hole to lose enough ground to go into a playoff and as you see I make a triple bogey here but he lost um, he was three shots ahead with one hole to play and he 
Got a triple bogey eight on the final hole at Torrey Pine South at the Farmers Insurance Open. And then lost the playoff to Brant Snedeker two holes later. And um, Kyle Stanley, I got to tell you, if you, I don't, I, some of you guys are probably wondering, who are my favorite golfers? Well, one of them is Kyle Stanley. And um, part of the reason for that is not because he lost that tournament. I mean, who would, who, how would, how would that be how you want to be remembered? Because a bunch of people compare Kyle Stanley to Jean Vandeveld, like, oh, well, they're both, they're both choke artists. Well, Kyle Stanley did something after his, his awful loss. The week after the Farmers Insurance Open, he proceeded to win one of the biggest tournaments on the PGA Tour yearly schedule, the Waste Management Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale, where he made a four-foot putt on the final hole to win, where he missed it the previous week. So, kind of just, I mean... Coming back that fast is something that I haven't figured out how to do. I mean, I know you. I know sometimes a, a hole goes so badly that it kind of is an irreversible damage on a round, oh, which is kind of what hole 12 was. As you see here, I make two really good pars. But in hindsight, what do they even mean like those 13 and 14 that you just saw i made real short work of those two holes and um but i mean when you look back at it i mean you would normally think oh those are two huge pars coming towards the trail end of the round on a, a really good paced round yeah if it hadn't been for the triple bogey a hole earlier oh man just um that kind of stuff. I mean, obviously with the pros, they play every week. I mean, they they get chance after chance after chance to play their best golf. And um, sometimes that's not the case for a weekend warrior like myself. Um, I mean, I'm still I'm still want to be competitive with golf, of course. I mean. I act as though I'm competitive every step of the way. So, as I was saying, sorry, I just got interrupted on my end. Um, here's the deal. I mean, with Kyle Stanley, he knew he had another big tournament coming up, and he was like, you know what? I'm going to go win that one. I'm, I'm going to get the win that I should have had last week. And that's exactly what he did. I per personally... I believe he made himself do that. And um, some sometimes when I'm getting in a big flow and a bad hole like that comes along, like I'm working real hard on these putts. I'm working hard to read them. I'm, I'm being more wise with my club selection. As you saw, I, I didn't take driver even though it's a pretty long hole, but you have to be cognizant of uh, how thin the hole is. Just little things like that is uh, what I took into consideration on these two hole on these two soon to be three holes oh, just I barely miss out on three straight pars this is actually handicap hole number two so I really wanted that one that would have been nice uh, but personally I believe Kyle Stanley made himself uh, get back up and he's like you know what I'm gonna keep working at this I'm I put myself in this and now I got to get myself out of it so, I just think that's a very admirable uh, quality for somebody to have that's really not always a given, um, especially when it comes to uh, sports. I mean, because you, I mean, you think of Gonzaga. I, I mean, I know it's a totally different sport. Like now, we're talking about basketball, but Gonzaga, they made it to the national championship one year and they lost the final game in March Madness and have you ever seen them back since then? No. Me and Kyle Stanley 
We are not about to pull a Gonzaga. We're not about that. That's not how we roll. Even though maybe my shot suggests that we're falling apart as we get another penalty here. Just in a bad position off the tee, really. It was just... Um, on the tees I was playing from were actually 512 yards on this particular day. But as you guys are going to see on the scorecard later, this hole normally plays at 539. So that was not uh, something that I was expecting walking up. I was like, oh, the tees are forward. Dang, now I gotta now I gotta uh, deal with that bunker that I n normally wouldn't have to. So uh, I don't know. Just uh, maybe that's. Uh, I mean, I mean, because you because you think about distance like that, you you think to yourself, you you you're probably been told if you're a golfer out there, and you've been told, hey, whatever you do, don't play tees that are too long. And I'm not suggesting play the tips on literally every course you go to because sometimes courses are like 7,300 yards and that's totally stupid. Like those are made for like PGA pros and web.com tour pros or corn Ferry or whatever it's called now. Um, they keep changing the name. Uh, but when you think to yourself, okay, which tees am I going to play? Sometimes... Yeah, even though your driving distance may suggest that you want to play a tee that's maybe 61, 6,200 yards. But then you go out there and you end up having a, your, like, least favorite club in on every hole. I mean, I mean, look, look at me here. I mean, this, this hole's just a beast. This hole, nah, scratch that for this hole. This hole's a pain no matter what who it's for this hole is long and uphill and it was into the wind today and boy oh boy did i hit a piping drive and then i hit this great five wood around the tree what a shot oh man just smoked it both shots in a row Could to get shot have high been here much better boy, oh boy. i don't think so what a shot that, that was! Definitely wood. one of my best shots of the day. Dang, that was. I really awesome. needed it too because I was like, that was about to go bogey, awesome. bogey. Uh, for two straight holes, just now on fifteen and sixteen, I was like, you know what? I am not going to end the round like that. We're gonna, we're gonna finish strong, and we're gonna keep this round respectable, even though we lost our chance at breaking eighty. Like, and you guys have seen me do that before, so. As you see here, I go up real confident. Okay, now this is just stupid. So um, I was like, you know what? That's a little long for a wedge worthy. I'm going to go grab and grab the putter. I'm going to be serious with this. I'm going to get a real par on the hardest hole in the course, and that's exactly what I do. Or actually, no, this is not This is the second hardest hole in the course after 15. So um, One real of good my par favorite there. favorite finishing holes. Real good job reeling it back yards. in. Uh, and now we have birdie, my favorite hole don't in the course. It. The drivable 18th. Maybe not uh, from the gold tees, though. From the whites, I could probably hit. I could probably have hit this green with how good of a drive I had if I was playing from the white tees. Yeah, that I wouldn't was a have great made shot. it. That, that was a that was a that really was a good, good poke where I got it too. Yeah, as you can see, that water marker. creeps in there on the left Probably side. Like 45, 50 maybe. And um, at most. Yeah, the green kind of gets tucked behind there. So you can't take it straight at it, even though it's only 304. Actually, it's usually 294, but now we have a T that's back a little bit. So, yeah, just, uh, it, it, I mean, it was November eighth or ninth when I played this round uh so this was actually I think the last week that they were open for the season um if I remember correctly from my work schedule uh so they were taking some stuff off the course like if you had hadn't noticed there weren't any ball washers out which I thought was complete bs um I was like, if anything, you leave that till the end. Because conditions right now suck. 
So, um, I don't know. It was just a weird round today, but overall I played pretty well, and uh, here we are trying to close it out, but this might end pretty tragically here with a three-putt coming up. So, let's hope that doesn't happen. And I'm like, you know what? I was confident. I saw the break coming back. You saw I didn't turn away out of disgust, which is something that a lot of experienced golfers will, you will see them do, uh, and uh, able to make the comeback. I was feeling it, so I decided to go for it. All right. So there you have it, guys. That is Fieldstone Golf Club, Auburn Hills, Michigan. Course that I work at, finally, I was able to do a course vlog here. Oh my goodness, it took me long enough, right? So, thanks for watching, guys. That was a whole lot of fun. I thought I really, I thought I really played well today, honestly. I mean, I know my score looks rather average, but um, I mean, you got to factor in the fact that it was forty six degrees out, and uh, that there weren't any ball washers because. Dirt on your ball actually affects your flight a little bit. Um, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, tough, tough day. Tough, tough day for golf. But you know what? I'm a weirdo, and I'm a diehard for golf. And uh, I, I, I would play in the snow if the course was open. Honestly. Um, now that uh, all that's been said, uh, yeah, just take a look at the card real quick. Um, Thirty-one putts. 7 out of 14 fairways, that's pretty good. Um, half or better is good. Um, yeah, then I had three penalties. That needs to improve. And then I had... Um, I'm trying to look at how many greens I had. I'm pulling it back out right now. Just give me a second. Oh, that's uh, another card. 7 out of 18. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've got the card back up as well right now. So, um, that was Fieldstone Golf Club. Thanks for coming along with for the ride. I thought that was an awesome course vlog that I did. That was one of my favorite course vlogs that I've ever done, really. I really like Fieldstone. Real nice course. Um, Blake, hope you're happy. <laughs> I saw your comment on the last video. You were real pumped that this came out. Hey, so so was I. So was I. I was I was happy to get this one out. I I knew you guys wanted it, so um, I made it happen. And uh, you know what? I still got a couple more course vlogs left before the year's out. Coming to you from December seventeenth. Now, oh man, there's still some more golf that I've played. So look forward to that, guys. Um, I'm trying to think of something else that I wanted to say, but it's not coming to me. So you know what? I'll pick up on that later. That's all for now, guys. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.